Contending with modern economic difficulties requires quite as high courage and as much enterprise as was displayed by men and women of covered wagon days. At that time, money was not a necessity. The old timer traded his produce for everything from cloth and foodstuffs to household furnishings. Today it's a different story. Families in most cases depend upon a paycheck for the necessities of life. There is an ever-present need for money when debts pile up because of sickness, temporary unemployment, pay cuts, or improvidence. Cash may be needed for the emergencies of birth, death, travel, or to take advantage of opportunities in education or business. Where can the self-respecting employed family of today turn for aid? Not to nature, as did the pioneer of 1833. It must turn somewhere. What is the answer? How much of a loan do you require, Mr. Brown? Well, I figure about $300. Are you a depositor here? No, I have no bank account. What collateral can you offer for this loan, Mr. Brown? I can offer only my record and my present salary. I'm very sorry, Mr. Brown, but I'm afraid we can't accommodate you. But I thought banks were supposed to make loans. They are, but we can't afford to retail money in small lots, except occasionally to accommodate a depositor. The average loan that we make is several thousand dollars. We are acquainted with our customers' financial condition, so that it is only a matter of a few moments to make him a loan. Our costs will increase if we were to divide that loan between 50 or 100 people. It would require a great many more officers and clerks to handle the details. But I don't quite understand you. Well, it's not only the time required to make a loan that we have the plan on, but also the cost of collection. You, no doubt, would like to repay your loan in small monthly installments. And as we are only permitted to charge you the regular bank rate of interest, the handling and collecting of your loan would show us a loss instead of a profit. No banking institution can lend small sums at the bank rate and pay expenses. So you see, Mr. Brown, we can't solve your problem. Evidently, this is not the answer. Then what is the answer? All right, children, bedtime. All right. Good night, Mama. Good night, darling. Good night, honey. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Sonny. Mary, I saw the banker today, and all I got was reasons why banks can't make small loans. Oh, but what are we going to do, John? We must have money to meet those overdue grocery and doctor bills. I don't know, dear. But we'll find some way. Tuesday night in Chicago, the household hour of musical memory, presented by the Household Finance Corporation, America's foremost family finance organization. Well, that's interesting. I wonder what this Household Finance Corporation is. It may be the very thing we need. I remember seeing one of their ads in the paper. Ladies and gentlemen, the Household Manager. In the days of our forefathers, when commercial banks were organized to finance commerce and industry, maximum interest laws of 6 to 10 percent were provided. Then, new economic conditions of the machine age produced a crying need for family loans and legislators, ignoring the retail nature of the business, insisted upon a maximum rate so low that small loans could not be made profitably. This left about 80% of our families without loan facilities to meet emergencies and refinance debts. In 1916, after a survey, the Russell Sage Foundation recommended that agencies be established under strict state supervision to lend without collateral or endorsers that a charge of not more than three and one-half percent a month simple interest be collected like rent on unpaid balances without fines, fees, or other charges, that loans be limited to $300 or less. 
Twenty-five state governments have adopted legislation based on the Russell Sage Foundation Uniform Small Loan Law and serve 77% of the country's urban population. These laws license and supervise firms which loan money to families without requiring outside endorsers or bankable security. These laws have been advocated by the leading civic and social service organizations and have been endorsed and signed by such outstanding governors as Franklin Roosevelt, when governor of New York, Frank Loudon of Illinois, James Cox of Ohio, and Woodrow Wilson, when governor of New Jersey. The family finance business also has the endorsement of the banking commissioners in these 25 states. Under their supervision, there are over 3,500 state licensed offices. One of the most important of these family finance companies is the Household Finance Corporation. Operating in 95 American cities, Household has 148 offices in these cities. During a recent 12 month period, Household made small loans to more than 300,000 families in various parts of the country. Practically every profession and trade listed in the United States Census is served. Why do people borrow money? Household loans are made primarily for the purpose of helping families get out of debt. 82% borrowed to pay family debts already contracted. Nine and one-tenth percent of the families borrowed for business needs. Two and eight-tenths percent for travel and vacation. Two and six-tenths percent for education. And two and one-tenth percent for moving and miscellaneous expenses. Of course, it costs more to retail small sums of money than to lend large amounts. The costs of investigating, making, collecting, and bookkeeping are approximately the same for loans of different sizes. But these fixed costs occur only one time when household borrows a million dollars from the bank. They are repeated more than 5,000 times when household lends the million to over 5,000 people. There are also 60,000 monthly collections and that many bookkeeping operations during a year. You will always find household ready to give its customers the advantage of the lowest possible charges consistent with sound business practice. If in doubt, ask any bank about household. John, that's the company whose ad I saw in the paper today. Oh, well, where is it? Let me see it. Here it is. That may be the very help we need. Mr. and Mrs. Brown investigated the household loan plan and phoned for a household representative to call on them. After he had made sure of their honesty, orderliness, and good living habits, and had listed their household equipment during a visit to their home, they were called into the household office. We now find them after a detailed but pleasant interview with the household manager. Well, Mr. Brown, we're satisfied as to your credit and income, and we're glad to make you the loan. It will pay up all of those pressing debts. After making your monthly payments, you'll have more than 90% of your income left for current expenses. There is your money, and this is your payment book. Thank you. And you may depend on our making the monthly payments when they are due. I'm confident of that. Your receipts show how promptly you've taken care of your other obligations. And you know, the more rapidly you pay off the loan, the less it'll cost you. That's true, but if Mr. Brown should get sick and we had no pay coming in, what would happen? We don't expect you to do the impossible. If you do your part to the best of your ability, I'm sure there'll be no difficulty. Well, that's fair enough. Oh, just a moment. Here's our money management booklet. It'll help you get out of debt, keep your budget balanced, and assist you to live within your income. We'll gladly help you with any of your financial problems. Bring them here to me, all right to our research department at headquarters. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Another family is on solid ground. They are able to walk out of the household office with heads up and shoulders back, ready to meet their creditors on an even footing. Household is a public service, yet human organization. Its plan permits adjustment to the changing financial circumstances of the customer. If emergencies arise, extensions may be granted. If conditions improve, the borrower may increase his monthly payment or pay the entire loan at once, thus saving charges. This is the answer to the small borrower's problem. 
the household finance plan helps the family meet emergencies and refinance debts.